So in this video, we are going to look at the different ways in which aldehydes can be prepared. So we are going to see how to prepare them from acid chlorides, nitriles and esters. Now these substrates are pretty reactive ones and we will see how to tweak their reactivity in order to prepare our desired aldehyde. Because you see aldehyde preparation is not all that straightforward. There are a couple of challenges involved in this. So what are these challenges and how are we going to deal with them? So we are going to look at all of them in this video. Okay. So first let's begin with acid chlorides. We can prepare aldehydes from acid chlorides via Rosenman reduction. Now this is a classic method of preparing aldehydes where we use hydrogen gas in the presence of poison palladium catalyst which is a catalyst which is poisoned with a quinoline and sulfur. And what do we mean by poisoning a catalyst? It essentially means deactivating or moderating the reactivity of a catalyst. So the question is, why do we need to do that in the first place? Why do we need to moderate the reactivity of a catalyst? Well, you see, if we have a highly reactive catalyst like palladium in the presence of charcoal, then look at what a reactant is. We again have a very reactive substrate, right? So in this case, what would happen is acid chloride in the presence of a highly reactive catalyst would reduce to aldehyde, obviously, but it would not stop there. It would get further reduced to primary alcohol. But we don't want that, right? We want the reduction to stop at the aldehyde stage. And for that purpose, we need to decrease or moderate the reactivity of a catalyst. And how do we do that? Well, one way is to use barium sulfate as a support material for palladium and this physically limits its reactivity. You see, barium sulfate is a crystalline solid with a very low surface area. And in contrast, highly active catalysts typically tend to have a higher surface area to provide more sites for reaction to occur. For instance, if you look at this image, you can see that on the left side, we have a large compact catalyst structure and you can see only a small portion of the surface is exposed, right? So this allows fewer reaction sites for the molecules to interact. On the other hand, if you look at the right side, what do you see? The same material is broken into smaller pieces and this increases the overall exposed surface area. And this in turn gives many more sites for the molecules to interact. So this means the catalyst with a higher surface area tends to be more active because they provide more access points for the chemical reaction to occur. Now look at a reaction. We said we wanted to decrease or moderate the reactivity of a catalyst, right? So do we want situation A or situation B? Definitely not situation B, right? And that can be achieved by depositing palladium on this low surface area support like barium sulfate where the overall number of the active available site for the reaction is significantly reduced. Whereas if palladium was deposited on a high surface area support like say charcoal, it would be much more active and less selective as a catalyst. So this increased activity would mean that our acid chloride not only reduces to aldehyde, but it would further reduce to a primary alcohol, which is exactly what we do not want. Correct? So when we use barium sulfate as a physical support, remember palladium is still active. It is still reactive enough to catalyze the first reduction, the initial reduction from acid chloride to aldehyde. But its activity is so diminished now that it cannot further reduce this aldehyde to a primary alcohol. Now, in addition to using barium sulfate as a physical support, in many cases, we also use an additional chemical poison like quinoline sulfur that is added to further deactivate the catalyst, especially for reactive substrates like our acid chloride. So what happens here is that quinoline sulfur actively binds to the most reactive sites on the palladium surface and this further deactivates our catalyst. So remember folks, the key to the success of this reaction, Rosenman reaction is the deactivated catalyst which stops the reaction efficiently at aldehyde stage and if the catalyst were not poisoned or we did not moderate the reactivity of our catalyst, then the reduction would continue all the way to a primary alcohol, which is not what we want. All right. So now let's look at how to prepare aldehydes from nitriles. And for that, we'll discuss the Stefan reaction. Stefan reaction is another method to prepare aldehydes from nitriles. And this is a two-step reaction 
where first the nitrile is reduced to an aluminium chloride using stannous chloride tin SnCl2 and HCl and this intermediate aluminium chloride is then hydrolyzed with water to produce the final aldehyde so here SnCl2 acts as a strong reducing agent and uh, this method is okay it is effective but it is less practical because of the concerns of toxicity you see tin reagents are known to be highly toxic so we would want to use less of such toxic materials and prefer replacing it with safer methods right and not just that this reaction is most effective for aromatic nitriles like say converting benzonitrile to benzaldehyde it is not generally well suited for aliphatic nitriles especially those with a long chain carbon atom because side reactions often happen and that leads to lower yield and that brings us to the third point on yields yield of this reaction is not very great it is at best low to moderate now stefan reaction is an example of an older named reaction now this was significant historically but as i said we use a toxic reagent because of which it has now been replaced by safer and more efficient methods so one such safer method and one of the most popular methods is using dibalage for reduction which is diisobutyl aluminum hydride now this is a more modern and widely used method for preparing aldehydes from nitriles as well as from esters You see dibalage is a very bulky reducing agent that is less reactive than let's say one of the most common reducing agents like lithium aluminum hydride so because it is less reactive what does it mean the less reactivity translates into more selectivity so it is able to reduce nitriles or esters to an aldehyde without over reducing it to an alcohol like ester to an alcohol and nitrile to an amine now what is special about dibalage what makes this reducing agent a favorite for synthetic chemists let's see the first thing is obviously the steric hindrance dibalage has two bulky isobutyl groups attached to the aluminum atom and in contrast if you look at lithium aluminum hydride it has these teeny tiny hydrogen atoms attached to it now the large isobutyl groups in dibalage create significant steric hindrance around the only reactive hydrogen atom here so this makes it less accessible or available for reduction reaction in other words it is more selective and if you look at the hydride availability if you compare the hydride availability in these two reagents you can see that each molecule of dibalage has only one alh bond right which means it can deliver only one equivalent of hydride ion whereas lithium aluminum hydride has four alh bond which means in theory it can deliver up to four equivalents of hydride ions so this difference in the hydride availability makes lithium aluminum hydride a much more powerful and more importantly an indiscriminate reducing agent it is highly reactive and ends up reducing almost everything that comes its way on the other hand dibalage stops reduction or selectively halts the reduction at the aldehyde stage Now if you look at the reaction conditions we can see that to prepare nitriles the reaction is carried out at a very low temperature minus 78 degrees celsius followed by work up with dilute acid or water to hydrolyze the intermediate so in the first step of reaction with dibalage we get an imine intermediate which on hydrolysis gives us a corresponding aldehyde the same thing can be extended for uh, esters as well So here again we have a two step sequence dibalage reduces the ester to an aluminum complex and in the second step we have an aqueous workup that hydrolyzes the aluminum complex to an aldehyde and if any of our starting compounds here had functional groups other than like say nitrile or an ester group like say if it had a double bond or a triple bond and you want to selectively reduce a nitrile and an ester then Dibal H is a very good candidate to get the job done. For example, when reducing a molecule that contains both a nitrile group and a double bond, other reducing agents can give you unwanted product or a completely different product. So let's see what products we would get with different reducing agents here. Okay? So let's try with lithium aluminum hydride. If we treated this starting reactant or substrate with lithium aluminum hydride. 
then it would reduce CN to a primary amine, right? So it doesn't affect the double bond, but it certainly reduces the nitrile to a primary amine. Now, what if we try the same reaction with, say, hydrogen in the presence of palladium? So if we performed catalytic hydrogenation, in that case, hydrogen in the presence of palladium would reduce the nitrile group as well as the double bond here, right? It would give us the saturated compound. So here again, we are not getting an aldehyde and we've also lost our double bond. In contrast, if we treated this starting reactant with dibalage, in that case, look what we get. The double bond is unaffected, great. And the nitrile is now selectively reduced to an aldehyde, right? So we are not getting a primary amine or losing our saturation, but we are able to selectively reduce a nitrile to an aldehyde here. So in summary, we can see how valuable dibalage is as a reagent, right? In organic synthesis, it provides a reliable method for selective partial reduction of nitriles and esters. So this method is very clean and not just that, gives a high yield of our desired aldehyde. Interesting, right? So that's all folks for now. Let's look at some other ways of preparing aldehydes, especially aromatic aldehydes in the next video.